Hello everybody, it's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News, and we have the kind of a different sort of video for you this morning. We've got the Jane Doe v. Clayton Eckerd court case. This premiered um, or was live two weeks ago, and then we had only received some audio of this court case but now the full video has been made public. This is uh, uh, completely public. It's intended for anyone to watch, as most uh, civil proceedings are. I'm going to interject where, um, you know, at some moments I'll interject if there's anything worth mentioning, but I want to play it in its entirety. It's 90 minutes long. Again, we've already shared some uh, aspects of the trial. We've shared closing statements and cross-examination, but only the audio. So here we're going to have the video as well. I've blurred out Jane Doe. I'm going to ask that she's not mentioned my name in the chat. Uh, none of that. So uh, any, anything else is kind of on limits. Just, um, you know, ha I guess have respect for the court if you could. All right. So let's just get into it right now. Here's the, um, uh, you know, there's going to be some moments where there's silence, but just uh, grab a cup of coffee. This is Clayton's lawyer here, and we're going to be getting to it. Good morning, everybody in the chat. Shelby, Rachel, Stephanie, Annie? Yeah, actually... Um, On the right is Jane Doe's way. lawyer. One of them... Uh, isn't even one that I'm trying to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, it would, would be that one. Yeah. It, did you guys not have it? Yeah. It would have been. It, I labeled it like 15. I don't know if you saw that. I wanted to get this on uh, on our YouTube record here, so I'll do minimal interruptions, but. As they're getting ready to start here again, production value not too high on their end, but we'll take it. If I could have gotten in there, maybe we would have. Got a little bit of better bounce lighting, some better audio. Good morning, Lisa. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah, no problem. You like my mug? I didn't know that the court was going to lodge it like that. Like, I'm used to them doing my defense one, plaintiff one. Like, you know, back and forth. They're going to lodge it like all of them. All at Yeah. We have a very young attorney versus a very seasoned attorney. That was just a mistake. Don't even worry about it. I'm not going to try and admit it. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, this is the second hearing. The first one, he didn't have counsel. There's no reason people can't say her name. I just, you know, for my own sanity, would prefer not to. But there's nothing illegal about saying someone's name. Look at Clayton's got his suit on. His lawyer's, like, just ready to go. And Jane Doe is waiting in the lobby. All rise. I'll give Jane Doe this. She has good audio. This is an injunction against morning, harassment. And um, so we're here today in the matter of Clayton Ecker versus Laura Owens, CV 2023053952. We will start by having everyone uh, state their names. Ms. Arena, if you want to begin. Good morning, Your Honor. Deandra Arena, counsel for the plaintiff, Clayton Ecker. I'm also accompanied by Isabel Brandy from my office, who's an associate. Really, Mr. Ecker? My name's Clayton Ecker. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Joshua Lopez representing Laura Owens, who's present before the court on Microsoft Teams. Okay, thank you, Ms. Owens. If you can state your name for me. Laura Owens. All right, thank you. All right, so this is the continuation of the contested hearing that the uh, previously held. Continuation of the contested hearing. Um, before we start, I guess we'll discuss that there was a request to have the hearing uh, not uh, put on live stream. Uh, so 
the court granted that, uh, then there was an objection to that file. The court had granted it prior to the objection. Uh, but I have, re I have reviewed the objection. At this time, I'm still ordering that the live stream not be active during the hearing. The courtroom is still open. Uh, anyone who wants to come to the courthouse can view the hearing uh, uh, in the courthouse, but I'm not uh, having the hearing live stream. Um, we also had a... Uh, and back here is Greg on. Gillespie here on the bottom right. It's Greg with his pregnant fiance. Did you have an opportunity to review that? I, I did have an opportunity to review it, and I'd like to object on uh, a handful of different reasons, Your Honor. And if you'd like, I can present those now. Sure. Um, uh, so in regard to the amended amendment, well, in regard to the amendment, Your Honor, generally what happens in these order of protection hearings or injunction against harassment hearings, the petitioner is able to amend their petition at the beginning of the hearing before we've even started to determine what the scope of the hearing should be in regard to. He's explaining to the judge. Um, in this particular instance, Clayton did not have those in his petition. And we are now four-fifths of the way through his petition. This not is public. That, we've started the hearing, and he's ended his case in chief. We've already presented now. We, he's ended his testimony. He's ended entering his exhibits. We've moved on to the defense case in chief. And we're four-fifths. Again, we're four-fifths of the way through the hearing. If this was all complete on the same day, he wouldn't get that opportunity to now amend his petition once we're already about to be at the end of the hearing. Just because he's now hired counsel doesn't give him a new opportunity to now amend the petition or add exhibits or add testimony. That would essentially be restarting this whole... We were winning before it became a fair fight. Opening up uh, him, uh, the petitioner, to be able to testify and then cross-examination, and then we would add a, get a chance to respond. That that wouldn't make any sense. It's too late now. He shouldn't be able to amend the petition at this point. Do you know if you wanted to be heard? I do, Your Honor. And Here she goes. Remain seated. Okay. It's better for the microphone anyway. So. Whatever the court's preference is, of course. Um, Your Honor, with respect to our request to amend pursuant to Rule 38D, it's our position that we are able to amend at this point in time. Mr. Eckert has already provided testimony to support these new allegations in his case in chief. I believe the purpose of Rule 38 is in part for judicial economy. Uh, as the court's well aware, Mr. Eckert could proceed with filing an additional injunction against harassment at a later date. So we're really just doing this to ensure that the court has all the necessary allegations to proceed with making a determination in this hearing today. Um, I don't believe it's prejudicial whatsoever. Again, the testimony has already been provided to support these new allegations, and I think it's important that they be added so that the court can make a determination today and Mr. Eckert doesn't have to come back another time uh, with a new injunction. All right, thank you. Um, so when I first received it, I was concerned that we were, you know, just adding stuff at the last second. I do think that these are just um, making more specific allegations that we did discuss that Mr. Lopez did have an opportunity to cross-examine him about because they were based on exhibits that were already admitted uh, and have already been admitted at this time. So I will allow the amended allegations at this time over the objection. Um, but I do have the same concerns Mr. Lopez expressed, which is we're not restarting this hearing. Um, and so the reason we reset it was so that... And Mr. Lopez was like, we, I was about to win. And then we got Clayton, proper counsel, and now, you know... ...whatever exhibits they were choosing to admit. Um, Mr. Eckford, I had given him an opportunity to give the opportunity to review those exhibits prior to those being uh, admitted, um, since he hadn't had an opportunity to see those. So where we are in the case is that Ms. Owens has testified primarily... Um, she is going to, uh, I guess, finish her testimony through whatever exhibits uh, Mr. Lopez wants to admit. Actually, Annie, I think you're right in your hunch that she actually is here because she's a woman, um, Clayton's attorney. I think that's part of the cross-examine strategy is to have a woman cross-examine another woman. It takes away the ickiness. I understand that you're going to allow... And she's a fantastic lawyer. Petition, uh, but as far as the exhibits that the petitioner was... Trying to supplement those are not being included is that correct he's not getting the opportunity to admit additional exhibits is that correct i mean 
I guess the only thing I have about the exhibits, and I haven't seen that, I haven't reviewed all of those exhibits. The only thing I don't know about any of the exhibits is if they were in response to any of the exhibits that you have, I guess is what I, I'm not. And I, I guess I'm yeah. not sure either. Um, I guess that's the only thing I don't know, but um, at this point, I do think his, uh, you know, case has been basically concluded. Okay. Uh, my final question is, as far as this hearing, I know it indicates in the minute entry it was, uh, we were just going to go for 30 minutes. Is that 30 minutes um, altogether? Is that 30 minutes for us to present our exhibits? Is that broken down? I, I just want to make sure that I'm efficient with my time as best I can be. I mean, ideally, we're here for 30 minutes, but I will extend it to 45 minutes to allow everyone to do quick. Jane Doe is drinking a monster energy drink. Uh, and that would include cross-examination time would be the 30 minutes. So the judge wants it to be 30 minutes. I can guarantee you it's about 90. Yeah, or is it like 15? Clear your schedule, lady. Fine, and then 15, you know, 10 minutes to cross-examine if we need to, and 15 minutes for closing or whatever. Round okay. of time. All right, thank you. Okay, Ms. Rainey. Sure, with respect to the exhibits, the supplementals, they are for the most part, impeachment exhibits uh, with respect to Ms. Owens' prior testimony. So that's what they would be using for. And so I guess to answer the court's question, they are responsive to uh, defendant's exhibits. They're trying to get impeachment so exhibits. For cross-examination. That's what the supplemental exhibits are for. And, and I mean, I think you could use them for impeachment purposes if, they, if you felt they were. The judge probably hasn't reviewed the exhibits because the judge probably has court cases all day long, every day. This is just a sad truth of the court system here. Good morning. I was able to send them to my client, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. And Your Honor, one last thing. Um, while I understand and respect the court's decision regarding the courtroom being closed for live stream, I do have concerns regarding the fact that Ms. Owens is present virtually and who's present you know, in, in her household and who else is being able to listen to this. Yes, coffee is My bad. Client, Caffeine is bad for pregnancy. Not being able to be live streamed is being precluded from having any of his family, friends, or any other persons that may want to listen in in support of him. She's, sh able she's to, shaking her head no. From being able to do that. So I would just ask that the court at least confirm with Ms. Owens that no one is present. I know this is hard to confirm, but uh, that's one of our concerns. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously his family can be here, and I'm not sure he looks like he has some people here, but um, Ms. Owens, or, is anyone else with you? No, I'm in a casita by myself. Casita. Okay. I can also pay on if, you want to see, if they want to see that nobody else is present, if that would be helpful. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. So, Mr. Lopez, you may proceed. In the past, she's had her internet go out, and some hypothesized that her mom was pulling the plug on the internet. Uh, 38. And, Your Honor, do you have that available? It's a video. Uh, do you need a USB? Oh, here we go again. You can hook up to that, to your computer, so it to show it. I can make you a presentation. Seriously, if they just gave me a few minutes and invited me here, I would have their live stream ready. We'd have the internet exhibits, the video. So they're trying to figure out how to plug in a, a USB device. You can, well, actually, because I think you need the little hookup thing to that. Yeah, last last hearing when she didn't know they were live streamed, you could see her belly from about her belly up. You, her frame was low, uh, mid mid belly up, and today her frame is clavicle to top of the head. What was that, Your Honor? Sorry. I, I'm trying to get my JA to bring in the little extra extension. She's thing. wearing a um, you know. So they're trying to figure out the um. The things over here. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. If you just joined us, hit the like button and leave a comment. That helps the uh, video get picked up in the algorithm. It's important to share this because, as you know, we've been covering the court case, and rather than show bits and pieces, we're going to just show the whole unedited second part of the injunction against harassment. And I think they just took up to the. All right, so they're still doing technical work here. Now, it's important to note, Clayton didn't necessarily hire the lawyer he has here. She works for the law for firm that he hired. So some are wondering, oh, he just hired some hot lawyer. And by by all means, I know, you know, <laughs> she's beautiful. Uh, um, but she's very, very good at what she does. And, of course, um, 
you know, there is a strategy there to these cases because there's jealousy, there's weird emotions that go on. There is a strategy, as we saw, uh, Depp v. Heard, that there was um, a cross-examination of Amber Heard by Camille Vasquez, a very uh, beautiful and also very intelligent um, and competent lawyer. Could, could be a similar strategy. You can't throw that out the window. If that doesn't work, then the other thing I can do is just plug it directly into my computer. Is it working? I mean, I need you a presenter, but I don't see anything currently. I just see you right now, but if you, I don't know if you want to try to. Okay, All right, so they're still trying to figure some stuff out here. This is how it goes, folks. So, yes, um, not good to drink monster energy drink while pregnant. Maybe a sip of coffee, some light coffee decaf. Um, but it's definitely, there's zero positive for putting that much caffeine in your body. Um, especially with, you know, what would be considered a complicated pregnancy, you know, having twins and all. Are you playing something or? Not yet, but I, I wasn't sure. If it would so that's Greg in the background there supporting Clayton. He, of course, was um, in Not trial uh, with Jane Doe for several years. Um, sure, as long as everyone can. Okay. Know you and, and you have to remember, he has a lawyer because of the GoFundMe that okay. you guys uh, shared and donated to. We have in front of you an exhibit uh, that's marked 38. Um, I believe I know the one that you're referring to. As the, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe it's the video of my pregnant stomach. Is that correct? Yeah. Is this an accurate video of you? Um, so it's actually not showing up at all on um, on mine. Um, Your Honor, I can see you and I can see um, Mr. Eckerd's counsel, but I can't see my attorney or anything else. You can't see me? No, I if you can maybe just put it near the lap, we might be able to see it just on the screen. I mean, she's saying she can't see all the participants. Right, it'll pick up, guys. Well, can you see him now? It'll pick I, up. I, I can only see um, you, and I can see Mr. Eckerd's counsel. I mean, I can maybe unmake you a presenter because I think maybe that's what happened. Is L asked why I blurred her face out. I've decided to blur her face out because she's taking me to court and I don't want any extra ammo for her um, to think that I'm trying to smear her in any way. We're just trying to show the full court case here. There is a, you can access this video on YouTube if you wanted to watch it with the full unblurred video. She's most yeah, likely okay. not there because she um, actually won an order of protection against Clayton. So she, I think she doesn't have to be there in the Arizona court. I don't believe, you know, she, she lost her temporary order of protection against me. So when she takes me to court, I believe she has to be there again, if she doesn't drop the court case. I don't know at this point if she's even allowed to. For him so he could verify that I was indeed pregnant. Okay, and is this video an accurate reflection of what you look like recently? Um, in September, I believe. And is this a video that Mr. Eckert asked you to send to him? Yes, it is. Was that to show proof that you were, in fact, pregnant? Yes. Okay, then I'd like to move into evidence exhibit 38. There are objection. I don't believe sufficient foundation was laid. Also, this video does not have any time or date stamp on it to be inherently reliable. I mean, I can't see it, but... You can't handle is there any way, Your Honor, for the video to be played on the Microsoft Teams? So that's what I think we were trying to have them do with that. Uh, the hookup thing, but I, I don't know specifically how to do it. Beth, do you know how to hook it up or no? I do not, but I can ask next door oh my gosh they can't even hook the video up look there <laughs> he's jiggling it on camera good golly oh boy where's the music when you need it here it is folks this, i'm not playing this music this is actually live in the courtroom this is the judge the judge has a uh the judge likes to play music when they're waiting for fear of her own safety. But there is a bailiff, I believe, in these court hearings that is there to protect people. They're not just forcing yeah, her to be there. A couple of times, there's nothing happening. Okay. All right. 
I'll play the goat. I'll play the Curb Your Enthusiasm music every time there's a moment of stupidity. Yes, Michelle, she's taking me to court. I know you didn't know I that. I just want to lay a little more foundation for the exhibit itself. Lay that foundation. Uh, yeah, so, Ms. Eckerd, when did you say that you took this video? Um, I took this video in September, um, and when I did send it to Mr. Eckerd on that date via email, um, I also sent him a screenshot um, that showed, um, like, if you scroll up on a video, and it, it can show exactly when it was taken, where it was taken, um, to prove that it wasn't something like I had edited or, or taken prior to that. And why did you take that video? I took that video because he had asked me for a video to show him that I was pregnant. Um, okay. Because, and this, yeah, I'm sorry. The video that you submitted um, and that we're requesting the court enter into evidence, is this, in, this is the video that you're talking about? Yes, it is. I was able to pull up 38. Yes, that's the video. And I did it. At this time, we're requesting that this be entered into evidence. Again, I reiterate my objection, Your Honor. I don't believe sufficient foundation has been laid. She says September. I don't have the date in September of the year. Uh, there's no proof she sent this to Mr. Eckerd. And furthermore, we don't have proof that it hasn't been edited. Your Honor, she's testified that this was the video that she sent it in September. She sent it because Mr. Eckerd had indicated she should send it to him. Uh, to show that she was pregnant, the foundation's laid. She testified to all of this. Ms. So, Owens, does the video that you're uh, looking at in Exhibit 38, is that a true and accurate depiction of the video that you made in September? Yes, it is. All right. I'll look at the uh, exhibit over the objection. Uh, was it working? I uh, appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Let's do our best to limit any sort of personal attacks on either party here. That way we can just like stick to the merit. Although I do, I do appreciate uh, you all and your opinions. Jones, I'd like to take your attention to exhibit 40. Can you please explain what these are? These are text messages that Clayton sent me. Um, from the time when he found out that I was pregnant through, um, I believe it was the beginning of July. Um, and these were uh, text messages, for example, that that showed that, that um, I believe it was the second to last one, shows, I'm sorry, this made it harder. I wanted you to come over to confirm what I was doubting, and it did confirm that. So I don't see you as a liar anymore, proving that I had gone over to his house and taken a pregnancy test that he had purchased in front of him and that he knew I was Your pregnant. Honor, I'm going to object at this time. She's reading exhibits that have not been admitted into evidence. More foundation needs to be laid as far as I'm concerned. Your Honor, I think that she's just trying to explain what these are. Um, and she is okay. lying. I mean, she can explain that without reading the whole exhibit. So. Okay. Uh, okay, without a, a, are these text messages that Clayton had sent to you? Yes, they are. Great questions. The phone number that is indicated at the top of each one of these text messages, a uh, number that you know to be Clayton? Yes, it is. Okay. Was that a phone number that Clayton had texted you pre- Nancy, previously? Nancy, this is, this is yes. Jane's lawyer. Do you know if Clayton had changed his number since he um, had texted you from that number previously? No, he had not, to my knowledge. Jackie, I was being sarcastic. And... Uh, these text messages, uh, were they sent to you during the time periods uh, between um, when you became pregnant to uh, when this petition uh, against you for this injunction against harassment was filed? Yes. Are these accurate um, reflections of those text messages? Have they been altered in any way? They have not been altered in any way. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to admit into evidence Exhibit 40. Yes, Clayton okay. thought she was Sorry, pregnant. Objecting for the record, I think there's a completeness issue here. These text messages have been altered, as the court can see. These text messages only include the statements uh, that Ms. Owens wants to include here, not the context surrounding the text messages. Clayton's shaking his head. I also believe that there hasn't been sufficient foundation laid with respect to the actual dates that these text messages span. All right, I'll admit 40 over objection. 
And that's and that when we we noticed that too when she, when she was sharing all of the text messages from Clayton, she wasn't sharing the full context of them. Attention now to exhibit forty-seven, which just goes to show that it's not in good faith when she shared the initial text. And what is this exhibit? This is uh, an email I got from Clayton on September seventeenth, saying that he was unbothered by me going to the media about the situation. Okay. Now, so she uh, admits she went to the media. She's never denied that she leaked the story to the Sun. You said when was this? When was this email sent to you? September seventeenth. And it was your understanding that it was sent from Mr. Eckerd. Yes, correct. Okay. And what was this email in response to? Uh, this was in response to me saying that I, uh, I had told him that if he didn't. Uh, continue to participate in the paternity case that I felt like I was going to need to go to the press because I thought that would pressure him to come up with a parenting Objection, plan. Objection, Your Honor. She's providing a narrative that's not part of this exhibit. Um, again, this is a completeness issue here. She is cutting out the portion she wants and leaving out the context, which would be the email that she sent him that he is responding to. Um, I'm only if you want to present the other half of it, obviously you can. I would go ahead and uh, admit exhibit. What are we, 40? Okay. Your Honor, yeah, at this time I'd like to admit this exhibit. 47. That will be admitted. So she wanted, she for, she went public, she says, because she wanted to force okay. him uh, I'd like to, to be a part of the paternity plan. Seven. Uh, this, again, is, or, uh, what is it? I do not have exhibit 37 in, in front of me. Uh, it should be a video. Um, um, can, can you possibly uh, give me the context for which video? Kristen said she did this to herself by uh, going public. Video that was posted by Clayton. I don't oh, okay. disagree. Yes, I know exactly the video. It was um, a video that Clayton posted on October the 6th on his public. Wait, what is this? What is this video? Um, this is Mr. Eckerd uh, telling his 200 and nearly 300,000 uh, uh, followers that um, the results of our paternity testing were back and he was not the father when, in fact, um, the paternity test results were, were not back. He said there was little okay, to no so fetal DNA. This, you had done a paternity test? Uh, correct. The results are not back? The results are still not back. The testing is ongoing according to the lab. What a long test. But since the, since those, since the paternity test had come back, you are indicating Clayton had posted a video? Correct. Where was that video posted? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, did you say where or when? Where? Um, it was posted to his public Instagram. When was it posted? October the 6th. Okay, how did you get a copy of it? Um, I got a copy because it was um, on his public Instagram. Okay, and was uh, was this an accurate report? Have you altered the video in any way? No, I have not. Okay. Your Honor, it's, a waste, it's a waste of a question. 37 into evidence. Your Honor, I'm objecting on relevance. This case is about... Miss Owen's harassment of Mr. Eckert. Mr. Eckert posting anything on his private social media is not relevant to this case. Good objection. Your Honor, as part of the petition that Mr. Eckert had written, she he had indicated that my client was defaming him when in fact my client was not defaming him and that she was harassing him by sending him emails and different text messages. I think that this is relevant to show that um, not only were the text messages and emails concerning her, uh, my client's pregnancy, paternity, but also what I had indicated in my opening and evidence that we had Ms. Owens testify to, that she did, in fact, also message Clayton to take down certain false videos or um, false statements offline because she was getting harassed by his fans and followers. So this video is to show that this was the video that he had posted and the reason um, she had kin uh, continued communication with him beyond just the pregnancy and paternity was for him to take down certain videos that it wasn't for harassment and that it was for legitimate purposes. 
this is that video that we want to present to show why my client was communicating with Clinton regarding that specific issue. Confusing. All right. I'll admit the exhibit for the purpose of that limited purpose that you're referring you. to. Authorization to publish to the court. So okay. Clayton never said her name when he said little to no, little to no fetal DNA. So you can't really hear it, but that's Clayton in the background saying, little to no fetal DNA. I knew, you knew, we all knew, let's go. He said two false accusations in a lifetime is enough. There it is, folks. Uh, about five more minutes. No, Kristen, there's no sonogram. There's only an altered sonogram. So I'd like to turn your attention to Exhibit 44. What is Exhibit 44? Exhibit 44 is a text message I received from Clayton on June the 4th. Okay. And um, was this... Okay, this was from... Is this a text message or is this an email? This is a text message. Is this an accurate reflection of the text message? Has it been altered in any way um, that Clayton had sent to you? No, it has not been altered, and yes, it is accurate. It, I don't see a phone number in here. Was Mr. Eckerd's phone number saved as Clayton Eckerd in your phone? Yes, it was at that point. Okay. And... Um, Honor, I'd like to admit Exhibit 44 into evidence at this time. Any objection to 44? Your Honor, I would just object for the record as to completeness. Again, I believe there is more to this text message than what is being disclosed in this exhibit. Yeah, show the full text thread. All right, I'll admit it over objection. Okay, um, I'd like to turn to Exhibit 46. Ms. Owens, what is Exhibit 46? Um, exhibit 46 is uh, a variety of different medical providers that I saw uh, confirming that I am, in fact, pregnant from the day I found out I was pregnant on June 1st through, um, I believe it was last week. It may have been uh, through the week prior to that, but I have the dates on there uh, through October okay. 11th. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, were, were, were these pictures, why were these pictures taken? Why did you save these documents? Um, I saved these documents again to try to prove to Mr. Eckerd that I was indeed pregnant because he uh, doubted me. Did he ask you to send these documents? Yes, he did. To show that, to show why? Um, he asked for these documents to show that I was indeed um, pregnant and that the pregnancy was ongoing and that it was viable. Have you altered any of these documents in a way, in any way to misconstrue their meaning? No, I have not altered them. And are these an accurate re reflection of these documents? Yes, it's entirely accurate. They are your documents? Yes, they are. And then they're going to show evidence that she tried to coerce Clayton into staying with her in order for him to have control over whether or not she gets an abortion. We'll get to that part in a little bit. I believe the court needs to see these exhibits 
Um, but I will note that he had concerns regarding what they're being offered for. So, um, at 46. Uh, I'd like to take your attention to Exhibit 48. Do you have that in front of you? I do, yes. Okay, what is it? Um, this is a letter from the Arizona Department of Real Estate that they sent me after uh, looking into Mr. Eckert's conduct when he was my uh, realtor, um, showing that he was found in violation of professional conduct for not submitting an offer. Okay, was this something that you received from the Arizona Department of Real Estate? Correct. Did you alter this document in any way? No, I did not. Did you receive it on or about September 15, 2023? Correct. Okay, Your Honor, I'd like to admit this into evidence. I'm objecting for the record based on relevance. Again, this matter is about Ms. Owen's harassment of Mr. Eckert. I do not believe that this is relevant. I agree. It will not be admitted. 48. You know how much time? One minute. <laughs> All right. I'd like so. to turn to exhibit 50, Your Honor. This will be the final one today. Their final exhibit before so cross examination. 50, do, you see, do you recognize that exhibit? Yes, I do. Yes, Clayton and claims they only had oral sex. Um, this is something that was posted to Reddit um, by Mr. Eckerd under a uh, false name, and that was also an objection a order no. of protection hearing I had against him last. This last is not week true. Was discussed. Okay, and did you change this image in any way? No, I definitely did not. So before I'm going to pause, this is the only time I'm going to pause here. She's claiming in the next piece of evidence that there's an image that has to be from Clayton because she shared it with no one else. Now, she's claiming that same image was shared by me on Reddit. So she's saying no one else has access to this image, but there is evidence. I'm talking videos and photographic evidence of her public Dropbox where she put this image. So she shared a public Dropbox and then uploaded this image. And now <clears throat> she's actually accusing me of revenge porn because this image was then reshared online after she made it public. What she doesn't realize is she's the one who put the image public. I'm just letting you guys know. How did you get a copy of this image? <coughs> um, it, was, it was on Reddit. Somebody had... Uh created it um but i i know it was mr Eckert because only he had he had this image not true we have evidence this objection I, is she's testifying your honor regarding information that she cannot testify about she can't prove it speculating it wasn't him oh, so. oh. it didn't have her lay foundation that she has knowledge of okay if it ain't you'll read it that mr. you must acquit this, this picture um, yes, because only he had he only he had the photo and the sonogram I'm I'm holding that's been edited. Nope. I okay. think that's been edited. Yeah, no, I'd like to admit exhibit fifty. And when she accuses us of that, we'll You're present that evidence. This is <clears throat> inherently unreliable. She's failed to lay sufficient foundation. We this this was not posted by Mr. Eckert, and she provided zero proof that this was posted by Mr. Eckert or further that this was sent to Mr. Eckert. That's right, Lois. Um, objection, speculation. I'm going to sustain the objection and not admit 50. Sustained. Okay, no further, uh, nothing further this time, Your Honor. Cross examination. Your Honor, before we start with cross examination, um, my request would be if the court's willing to entertain this, that we be permitted to go until noon. Um, and I would be willing to waive closing argument because I do have important questions that I would like to go through as opposed to presenting the court with a closing argument if the court would allow that. Well, let's see how we're doing on time. Thank you, Your Honor. 
So Clayton's lawyer wants Good morning, Ms. as much time as possible. Good morning. You were, thoroughly, you were thoroughly questioned by your attorney at the last hearing in this case on October 24th of 2023, correct? Correct. And you understand that you were under oath at that time and you remain under oath today, right? Correct. And you're aware that any false testimony that you provided or provide today could be considered perjury, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so based on that, Ms. Owens, before I proceed with my line of questioning, do you have any prior testimony that you'd like to correct at this time? I do not. Her lawyer's like, you gulp. I want to make sure that you're clear-headed. And obviously, uh, it's your position that you are pregnant with alleged twins, correct? A hundred percent. Yes, correct. What medications are you currently on? Objection, Your Honor. Relevant. And that's an, that's an inappropriate question for this. What overall can be impacting your testimony? Um, I'm on prescribed prenatals and I'm on folic acid. It's not medicine. I mean, it's... It's over the counter, I guess. And I also, I'm sorry, I also take Lamotrigine for epilepsy. Is there anything else? Is that your entire list of medications? That's my entire list because I was taken off of anything else that I was on when I found out that I was pregnant. And have you been diagnosed with any other medical or mental health issues? Objection, Your uh, Honor. I don't think that that's going into your mental health going into her physical health, mental health. I don't think that's appropriate uh, for this type of hearing. It's not appropriate. That doesn't have a question. Her mental health uh, is depression. appropriate for this hearing. Okay. And any other physical health diagnoses? Epilepsy. And who who provided those diagnoses? All right. I think we're now over the report of that testament. Understood, Your Honor. I'll move, move on, on, please. And how far along are you as we sit here today with respect to the pregnancy? I am 24 weeks along. This was two weeks ago. And when was your last menstrual period in order to calculate your due date? Uh, objection, Your Honor. I, I don't think that that's appropriate at this time. It, it seems like these questions are meant to harass my client. She's indicated she's pregnant. She's indicated it's been about a month. You don't need to know things about her menstrual period. I, I'm going to sustain the objection. Yeah, menstrual period has a lot to do with the pregnancy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you please uh, provide us with the your alleged due date? Uh, February 14th. Valentine's Day. Cupid's twins. And you testify that there's absolutely no possibility at all that your alleged twins are anyone other than Clayton, correct? There's no chance they're anybody else's. But you understand that Clayton has been very clear from day one that he did not have sexual intercourse with you, right? Um, Clayton was not. If you look at the June 4th message, he... Ma'am, these are yes or no questions. Do you understand that Clayton was very clear from day one that it's his position he did not have sexual intercourse with you? Then the answer is no. And as we sit here today, you have participated in three DNA tests to try to prove that Clayton's the father, correct? Correct. And not a single DNA test has come back. Oh, I'm sorry. Proving Clayton's the father. Oh, sorry. It was, it was two DNA tests, not three. Well, you indicated at the last hearing that you were providing a sample for the third DNA test to be completed, correct? But the second one got got there was an issue with the transit according to the lab so i mean that wasn't tested so i can't say that i have had three tests that have come back with different results it's a decent only point two were tested Ms. Owens, you've provided a sample on three separate occasions good question for dna tests correct correct but the second was it's a yes or no is there a yes or no question i'm not i'm not looking for you to elaborate so we'll move on. As we sit here today, not a single DNA test has come back indicating that Clayton's the father, correct? The samples were diluted and I'm going back next month is what so I was saying. Yes or no questions. It's a very simple question. As we sit here today, She's getting rattled. you have no 
DNA test that indicates that Clayton is the father, right? The results the yes testing or no. is ongoing is what I was told, as was Clayton. So, so that's said that on a couple occasions that the testing is ongoing. Correct. So the judge is, is it your tea. testimony that you provide these samples and that there's no results that are coming from these samples you're providing? I'm I'm unclear on what you're trying to ask me because they said that okay, I need well, to go back six months to give another sample that the testing is not back. So I'm I'm unclear. I guess I'm trying to say. Isn't it true? that the test came back and indicated there was zero fetal DNA. That's absolutely not true. Okay. I agree. The judge should have intervened and and said yes or no. You have provided no testimony and no um, objective evidence or documentation to date to support that you have a positive DNA test proving Clayton's the father of your alleged twin, right? The testing is ongoing. I'm, I'm unclear... I guess is what you're trying to ask me. Who is your OBGYN? Dr. McCool <laughs> and Dr. H- Dr. Higley. Sure, I wasn't able to, to hear that, and I'm not sure if that's uh, I'll withdraw the objection now. Can you please repeat that, Ms. Owens? Who, who is your OBGYN? My main OBGYN is the perinatologist, Dr. McCool. And what is the last time, oh, well, you said your main OBGYN. Who else are you seeing? What other pregnancy-related doctors are you seeing? Dr. Higley, who I saw last Friday, and, and an epilepsy doctor as well. Ford, he specializes in pregnancy. Okay. And in your, in your exhibit, I believe it was 44, you indicated, actually, let me go back here. I apologize. It was your exhibit 43. You indicated that all of exhibit 43 uh, contains copies of your medical rac- records that would support this alleged pregnancy, correct? Um, I believe it was exhibit 46 that was the proof of pregnancy. I mean, we didn't do exhibit 43. I apologize. Exhibit 46, my mistake. And in that exhibit 46, All that you have from Dr. McCool here is a screenshot of an upcoming appointment for Monday, July 24th of 2023, right? Correct. Because that he's a doctor. You you understand that anyone can go online at a mommy where Dr. McCool works and make an appointment for for an OBGYN. She's upset. She's rattled. Um, that that is that is not true. Dr. McCool special is a parent referral to have to see him because I have epilepsy. He's a high risk specialist. You can't go and make an appointment with him. I had to send records to get an appointment with him. Okay, but I the only record that you provided this court with regarding your alleged high risk perinatologist is a screenshot of an appointment for Monday, July twenty fourth of twenty twenty three, right? No, I provided the last page was October the 11th with a diagnosis of epilepsy during pregnancy from my neurologist after an appointment that day. Ms. So Owens, there is no copy of any medical record from October 11th. Yes, there is the last is page. Is October, it's is October that? 11th. If you look at the last page. Zeman Glennis on October 11th, 10, 53, 20, Mountain Standard Time. Yeah, I, I apologize. What was it that the court indicated? A few more minutes, so we need to probably step it up a little bit okay. if you want to get to other things. Um, as we sit here today, Ms. Owens, you have refused to sign any sort of HIPAA release so that Mr. Eckerd could obtain directly from your medical providers evidence to support any alleged pregnancy. No, I, on Friday, I literally had the doctor send it to him directly. I had my provider send it to him directly. And that's an email I sent to him telling him that it was sent directly to him. I signed a HIPAA release. Ms. 
Ms. Owens, this is not the first time that you've made allegations that you're pregnant with twins oh in the last two years, correct? Oh, boy. That is incorrect. Okay. So I would ask the court to take judicial notice, Your Honor, of the civil matter involving Mr. Greg Kolesky, who is present in the courtroom today. Whoa! Um, and it's CV. You get that number for the court. That's Greg right, right there to the bottom right. I have a protective 2021. Gillespie and against Mr. Eckerd, and I wish I was aware that Mr. Gillespie... 052893. She says she's a protective order. No, I'm going to object to that. And wishes she was alerted that he was in the courtroom. That, I mean, we, we had an exhibit that we discussed last time regarding that. You would have known if you were there. Presented with a complaint and a motion to dismiss, and there wasn't any findings from any court on anything related to that. So I'm not going to consider that at this point. Your Honor, I do have some questions that I think are very important for the court. So Jane just found out. I understand if the court doesn't want to take judicial notice that but I Greg do is have in the courtroom. That are important that I would like to proceed with regarding the the uncanny similarities. I I don't think that that would be appropriate for this specific hearing. We know the scope of this particular hearing. Bringing up things in a separate case, there could be there's separate issues. Uh, they're not. These are not the same thing. This is an injunction against harassment. I don't even know what that that case is. It's a pattern. That's not. It's not an injunction against harassment. I know that. It, it's. They're laying foundation it. that there's a pattern of abuse here. Sure, this goes to the heart of why Mr. Eckerd needs this injunction against harassment Bingo. and Miss Miss Owens' pattern, her modus operandi, her pattern of behavior, her Look pattern her. of making the same claims she against went. other men in the state of Arizona within the last two years. And I think it's highly relevant to this case because it supports why Mr. Eckert needs this injunction against harassment because this individual has done this before and there are concerns that she will not stop. Chug that monster. They, uh, I'm gonna sustain the objection. I'm not gonna allow that testimony. There she goes, <laughs> the victory so swig of monster. Ask, again, the court to reconsider here because this matter, it's very important that the court hears how Ms. Owens has made the exact same allegations in another matter within the last two years. And that she has committed perjury in her oh, last God. in the last hearing because she made incorrect state she made false statements under oath regarding the nature of that case. Adios, she mios. opens the door in her testimony when Mr. Lopez was cross examined when he was direct examining her regarding the fact that there are no other cases that are similar regarding things that happened in that case. So she did open the door based on her direct examination. Now, folks, I'm, I'm going to take this as the only time during this 90 minute um, sequence of events to share with you that I will be doing Christmas movie reviews on the bachelor rush hour podcast. And I also wanted to share with you guys that I've got a new uh, Rush Hour podcast intro. My apologies. This is going to be your only break by me to talk about this here. But here is the official intro for the new version of the afternoon podcast. I will be discussing this case more on today's podcast. Um, so definitely go check that out. Bachelor Rush Hour, wherever you listen to podcasts. Here's your 14 second intro. Welcome to the Rush Hour. Your daily dose of pop culture and entertainment news for your rush hour ride. Work sucks, but your commute doesn't have to. Buckle up and enjoy the drive with your host, stand-up comedian and power recapper, Dave Neal. All right, so that'll be this afternoon. I'll have updates, um, you know, fallout from you know posting this and what's going on with my court case. It was supposed to be this coming Monday. So for those that are new and not following here, I'm going to catch you guys up. I've been covering this story, and because of that, I received a cease and desist, and then I received a uh, uh, Jane Doe here actually did an order of protection against me. It was denied in the L.A. Superior Court, but I still have to go to trial for an injunction against harassment she's putting on me. So a lot of these sort of evidence she's got or reasons she's trying to get this injunction against harassment uh 
that that Clayton has against her removed is the same reason why I'm trying to get it removed from her. Does that make sense? So in this case, he's got an injunction against harassment on her saying, leave me alone. And also she's got one on me telling me to leave her alone, which we can't do because we cover Bachelor News and she made this whole thing public by leaking this whole story to the press and we're just trying to do uh, what is right. Uh, will she sue us for defamation and all these other things? Yet to be seen, but we have piles upon piles, if not truckloads of evidence that will go uh, to prove that we're doing everything appropriately here. All right, let's go back to the trial. These are very serious allegations that the petitioner's attorney is now alleging against my client. She is insisting that my client has now committed perjury. My client has never been, has no criminal history and is not being charged with perjury. So I don't, I, I don't know, like, that's just an allegation. Again, these cases are completely different. They're very similar. We're hearing that the attorney testified that these are the same. These are not the same matters. Very similar. Uh, this, these questions and this. He's named Greg and the other guy's named Clayton. They're completely different. Again, would be inappropriate and is outside the scope of this hearing. In fact, it even sounds like she's trying to bring out character evidence, which would be inadmissible in a hearing like this. Ooh. I'm going to sustain the objection again. So if there's other things you want to ask about her testimony, can okay. you have about two more minutes? The judge is on mom time. One more minute. Ten minutes later. One more minute. Ms. Owens. We have raised almost $10,000. And you testified under oath that Mr. Eckert blocked you from communicating with him, correct? He would block and unblock. But but not from communication. From It was on a text number, but we were always in email communication as recently as the day before we went to the, I went to the press, he sent me an email. So you guys have raised almost $10,000. Well, Mr. Eckert told you he didn't want you contacting him anymore and then would block your telephone number. Correct. But told me to email him. Ms. Owen, these are yes or no questions. Isn't it true that Mr. Eckert indicated he did not want you contacting him anymore and then would block your telephone number? Actually, that's incorrect from the last, in, from the early uh, resolution conference that we had. Mr. Eckert told me specifically to contact him via text. I had forgotten that. If you look at the, whatever the transcript from that hearing, you would see that. And I didn't, I haven't contacted him via text after he told me to. Okay, but can you take a look at Exhibit 55 for me, please? Um, I don't have an Exhibit 55. Your, these are our supplemental exhibits. That were not in the ones that, that are their exhibits that they would have sent you. Um, I. It may not, not be marked by, by number. Is, I guess the issue hers may not be marked by number. They are, Your Honor. We sent uh, them let me mark check by my number. email. I did not see his exhibits. Excuse me. Let me. Uh, and Your Honor, I'm asking for. I'll let you know if we get over ten thousand dollars. Prepared, knowing I presented these exhibits to her attorney yesterday, it's coming into my time, and I have still several questions I'd like to ask. I was not aware that that he was getting more exhibits added after he already had testified. So I apologize. Uh, I, okay. I, well, text messages between the parties dated 523-23, that's all I have. I don't have the actual that's exhibit. The, that's the first one. And then there is another one after that. Do you see? Do you have the exhibit that's from May 25th? Um, I don't see anything. I literally just am seeing a list of plaintiff's trial exhibits 55 through 63. Uh, can you scroll explain down. what the context is for me to understand? Are you able to scroll down? Your Honor, I'm concerned if she doesn't have these exhibits that we're going to need more time. So she has the exhibits. Scroll down. That I get through this testimony. And 
I provided these to counsel in advance to avoid this exact issue. And had Ms. Owens been present, this wouldn't have been an issue at all. Right, but I have a protective order against Mr. Eckerd. Uh, just, can you find the exhibits or not? It, uh, let me just try to see. She's never can... commented, as far as I know, to confirm that she has had sex with him. I think I see them. I see exhibit 50, 55. Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. Ms. Owens, do you see exhibit 55 is a text message communication between you and Clayton dated May 25th of 2023, correct? Correct. The day after he didn't file the... Uh, my I would move to admit these exhibits, yeah. Your Honor. This exhibit. Uh, it's not test time. should ask if you recognize the exhibit. Any objection to 55? Um, I no, don't remember sending I'll it. I'll admit 55. And here, Ms. Owens, on May 25th of 2023... Clayton says to you, I'm debating filing a police report. Please leave me alone. Correct? The, the context needs to be stated. He did not make the offer for $1.1 million for me. I am asking you yes or me. no question. <laughs> and he was found in violation. Your attorney will have the time to ask you a question again, Ms. Ellen. So just answer her question, and your attorney will have an opportunity to question you again. Okay. But can you uh, – I'm sorry. Can you uh, repeat the question? I, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> Jenner, I'm concerned that this is that she's doing this intentionally to eat it. All right, let's just ask the questions. We're wasting more time saying all that stuff. Ms. Owens, <laughs> isn't it true that on this text message dated May 25th of 2023, Clayton responded to you and said, I'm debating filing a police report. Please leave me alone, correct? That's what the text message says. I don't have that, but sure. And that's right what below says. that, you sent him another text message, correct? That's what it shows, correct. Okay. Can we just, take exhibit 56? It should be the next page of the document. She's not allowed to say yes. Donor, how are we on time? Because I knew you said oh. we we're close on time. So. <laughs> the, you know, uh, Jane Doe's lawyer just became the guy on the Friday afternoon in um, elementary school who's like, uh, Mrs. Robinson, you haven't assigned us homework for the weekend. That's what he just became here. So uh, just quickly to answer, someone said, has she ever said in court that she did have sex with Clayton? I don't believe so. Um, all we know is that she has said that they were intimate and that or that they had intimate relations and we also know that Clayton had message had emailed her saying all we had was oral sex, and she redacted that when she shared her notes publicly. So when we talk about like the redaction of notes or the redaction of text messages and emails, that's what we're talking about. That's not present in this court case. As a reminder, people are saying, how come they're not just finding out if she's pregnant or not? This is a court case against harassment. She very well may be pregnant. Like I said, she could have twins hiding behind her ovaries for a little to no fetal DNA. Did you check behind the ovaries? Oh, sorry, we were looking in the stomach. You know, I don't know. Um, um, no fetal DNA in the in the stomach, that's for sure. Uh, but either way, so that's where they stand. Uh, whether or not she has said under oath that they did have sex, I know that she has personally emailed me and other people claiming that she has that that they did have a form of intercourse. I I'm going to go into that in another time because I don't know if she wants to hold on to that as her truth. But she ha she has made conflicting statements there. I want to leave everyone time to do a closing if they choose to. You see these emails between you and Clayton dated May uh, June 28th of 2023, correct? Correct, but the middle email is missing from him, but correct, yes. You're a new for the admission of Exhibit 56, please. But it's missing the 56. middle email. Yeah, Yana, I'm going to object because this is... this. Uh, this isn't everything in, in whole. This is, you can see that there's an email missing between these two emails. I don't, there wasn't any foundation that was laid. Oh, okay. I, I, but this is, this is, this was one of many emails sent between the two of us. Clayton changed his mind many times. <laughs> I'm just, just referring to these exhibits. Do you recognize these exhibits? Oh, don't hurt your neck. Um, you set these messages? Um, I mean, that's that's what they said. I haven't gotten to read through them, but I mean, that's what it says. Do you believe these are 
a representation of the exhibits or of the emails that were sent? Um, I know that my name, when somebody emails, when I email somebody else, has a picture of me with a horse instead of the LO. So I don't know if that's relevant. Whereas, like Clayton's picture is, is shown with Clayton Eckert, so I don't know if that's relevant. I'm uh, if I read these quickly, I can see if um, if they are mine. I'm I'm going to trust that they are mine, but um, uh, I haven't got gotten a chance to read through them. Um, Your Honor, she she did testify that she recognized these the emails dated June 28th of 2023. So I'm asking for their admission. Um, again, the middle email is missing where Clayton tried to trap me, but. Um, uh, yeah, I'm asking if the court strike that, that there's no question before her right now regarding that. I'll, I'll strike that statement. I will go ahead and admit uh, Exhibit 56. She said he's trying to trap In Exhibit her. 56, Ms. Owens, on line one, you say, I just need clarity as to what we are doing. I've offered to give you control over the outcome of the pregnancy if we date exclusively and care for each other, correct? Correct, which was one thought on one day, and I took that away after, yes. And this is the exact same statement that you made to Mr. Gillespie back in July of 2021, isn't it? I have no idea what statement I made to Mr. Gillespie, but both pregnancies have been medically proven, and I have the documentation and sent it. But Ms. Owens, Ms. Owens, all right. Show the proof. Everyone talking over each other. I, I sent the HIPAA records. I, I released my HIPAA records. No, my there's no question before you. Your Honor, I'm asking the court to strike this, these statements. All right. So let's I, try I to just answer the question. If you, Very rattled. I, I don't know what You're I said right. in 2021. Okay, so if you don't remember, just say, I don't know what I said. I don't know. And, uh, that if I said yeah. Okay, I don't there know. we go. Yeah. All right, so but we have one room for like one more question, and we're going to be doing closing arguments. And Your Honor, again, I would just ask that in lieu of closing argument that I be permitted to ask. I've already done that. Okay. <laughs> We're already at 11.56 at the moment. So, okay, Your Honor. Um, and here, Ms. Owens, isn't it true that you alleged you were pregnant with twins with Mr. Gillespie in June of 2021? No, that was an email that he doctored in 2021 that I have already testified about that in the other case. So, no, I never said I was pregnant with twins. I'm going to pause right here. So, this is interesting. She claims he doctored an email. Again, this is Greg, the last guy. Jane Doe claims Greg Gillespie doctored an email where she claimed she was pregnant with twins. We have spoken to those that are or have represented Greg. And we have also spoken to people in that community. And I haven't seen any evidence proving that he doctored emails. And it can be very hard to doctor emails. Like, I think she has accused him of hacking into her account, which is also the same excuse she alleged when she says that the sonogram that she sent me that was fake wasn't from her. She said he hacked into her account. So she has now said that I believe in 2021 and in 2023, this guy who's not, I don't believe he's a hacker. I don't think he's got any, any skills there. I think he works in real estate, right? So she says he has hacked into her accounts. You know, I mean, could it be true? It, it, it certainly could, but I don't think there's been any, any evidence provided that that's what happened. I, I just think she's referencing her own testimony where she said that in the past. Can you please take a look? Again, this, was, exhibit. Was, this was an exhibit that, uh, whatever it is, I'm guessing I know what it is. It was one message that was doctored by Mr. Gillespie that appeared a year into the court case I had with him. Right. And we've already discussed the fact that I'm not really con considering all of that. So let's move to closing. Your Honor, my, my concern here, and, and again, I, 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 obviously, I mean this with all due respect, but Ms. Owens has a pattern of behavior here. She has previously made identical allegations in another case. The exhibits that I have today, a supplemental exhibit, 
all support that the statements she's made to Mr. Eckert are almost identical to statements made to Mr. Gillespie in 2021. This is highly concerning behavior. She has now murdered herself on several occasions during testimony. Look at her, look at her lawyer. Not being given the opportunity to show the court the documents to support that she is lying under oath. I, I have proven my pregnancies and had my records sent to Mr. Eckerd. Okay, Ms. Owens, we're not, we're, Ms. Owens, we're not testifying right. right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Even if it was true that Ms. Owens did that in the past, which we are denying, but even if it was true, that has no relation to this specific case. Just because she may have done it before doesn't mean she's doing it now. And we have presented evidence showing that she is pregnant. We have presented evidence showing I have why that's she is false. No we're we're going to do closing arguments now. So whoever wants to do a closing argument, Mr. Rena, go ahead. Your Honor, this is a clear case of harassment. The court has seen through all of the exhibits submitted by Mr. Ecker and the additional exhibits that were present, we presented today that the parties had an encounter in May of 2020. Mr. Ecker did not have sexual intercourse with Ms. Owens. Shortly thereafter, Ms. Owens began claiming she was pregnant with Mr. Eckert's child, with an alleged child. Mr. Eckert repeatedly, from May to today's date, has pleaded with Ms. Owens to stop contacting him. He has blocked her number on several occasions, and she gets a new number and or uses an app to continue contacting him. It has not stopped. Mr. Eckert has lost job opportunities, speaking engagements. He has suffered extreme emotional distress over these claims that are baseless and over her repeated outreach attempts after pleading with her to stop. This is the definition of harassment. The court's well aware harassment is defined per the statute as a series of acts over any period of time that is directed at a specific person and that would cause a reasonable person to be seriously alarmed, annoyed, or harassed. And the conduct, in fact, seriously alarms, annoys, or harasses the person and serves no legitimate purpose. Ms. Owens has fabricated a pregnancy now twice on two separate occasions. Mr. Eckert is the second victim of this. She has provided no medical records to support that she is in fact pregnant. You cut As the press. court saw, her exhibit 46, Your Honor, is not medical records to support a pregnancy. It is merely, and I'd like to draw the court's attention to this. It is a picture of a test completed at Banner on June 1st of 2023 regarding HCG. It does not say it is a positive pregnancy test. The yes, next sir. page, Your Honor. Oh, I'm sorry. Owen, this is not your turn. I'm sorry. It just, it does. Okay. It's Fair not enough. your turn. Her it lawyer told her to shut up. questionable, as, as a woman who's been pregnant before, that Ms. Owens goes to Banner to get an alleged pregnancy test on June 1st, and then she never, as far as, she never goes back to Banner Health for any additional testing. The next page of this exhibit is simply a screenshot of an upcoming appointment with a Dr. McCool on Monday, July 24th, 2023. If I was pregnant, um, and I'm not, as far as I know, but if I were pregnant, I would be laughing at all this. I'd be like, whatever, just wait for the babies to be born. Who cares? You know what I mean? Like, whatever. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to be proving myself. I'd be out there dancing around, you know, in a, in a bikini, you know, just showing off my pregnant belly with my belly button sticking out. You know what I mean? There are no records to support that she is an active patient with Dr. McCool, that he is her perinatologist. There's nothing. We just have a screenshot of an appointment that was made, which anyone can do online. The next record, Your Honor. This is so, so Jane here claims that anyone can't do that online. She says you need special records proven in order to make an appointment with this doctor because he's a neonatal specialist or whatever. But people on Reddit have 
gone to that website and shown that you could actually just make an appointment online. You could say you're pregnant with twins to make that appointment. You could say that you're, you, you know, you have, you've been inducted into this uh, mental health ward in the past. You could do all these different things and you just get an appointment. I could probably, you know, I mean, I don't want to abuse the system. I could probably call as Davina, as Davina Neal, Power uh, Prager, and I could probably get an appointment, in which case that would totally prove her point wrong. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to waste anyone's time. Now, a HCG test from any lab test now in Scottsdale. This is not a positive pregnancy test. This is a positive HCG test. Why is she going to a new provider for a alleged pregnancy test on October 16th? These next two pages of records. I mean, yeah, because it's not like she moved across the country and had to find a new gynecologist. Um, as far as I know, and people in the comment section can, you know, let me know. Usually, you find someone that's trusted, and you you want them to be the person you see throughout the whole pregnancy. You don't jump around to new people, especially if you're high risk. You want all of your information coming from one place. Now, it doesn't mean you couldn't. I mean, you could possibly jump around. But I think if if I could ask the chat for those that have given given birth or had babies or been pregnant, I think for the most part, if you're not moving or you're not completely unsatisfied with your gynecologist, you would probably stick to the same doctor, correct? Uh, it's hard to tell what they are. They look like they are screen grabs of, of an appointment that is unclear. It, it's just unclear. At the root of this case, and the reason that Mr. Ecker is fearful, he is scared, is the fact that there has been a fabricated pregnancy. She has participated in several paternity tests, none of which have come back showing any proof or any signs of fetal DNA, Your Honor. If it wasn't for the fact that she has done this before in another case, this is unbelievable. It is, it is very alarming. She lied under oath, and she lied to. She lied under oath at the last hearing. She's not being truthful today, and my client is legitimately fearful of what else she's capable of. He's asking that this court recognize that he has done everything to handle this appropriately. He has begged and pleaded with her to stop contacting him. There is no reason for these two to have communication, despite what Ms. Owens will say regarding this alleged pregnancy. There is no proven pregnancy at this point. So we are asking that this court find that she has harassed Mr. Eckert from May of 2023 up until today's date. And we're asking that the court find that the injunction against harassment needs to be ordered and maintained. Thank you, Ms. Chavez. Yes, Your Honor. Now, I would agree with Clayton that Laura's communications with him were alarming annoying, harassing, if in fact Laura wasn't pregnant, and if in fact he wasn't responding to her through the over four month period that she's been pregnant. She is pregnant, and he has been responding. He's played it into my game, therefore he shouldn't be harassed. Clayton has not met his burden in this matter. He's claimed that the amount of texts and emails has caused him to be alarmed, annoyed, harassed. Well, for starters, the reason there are so many emails and text messages is because the chosen form of communication between Laura and Clayton was through emails and text messages. Because he and blocked because her. That was how Clayton wanted them to communicate. Not in person, uh, not over the phone, but through emails and text messages. And second... We are talking about a span, again, of over, over four months or more. There are going to be a lot of text messages, dur messages during that time. There are going to be a lot of emails during that time. Third, he claimed in his petition that he has not responded to Laura and that he had blocked her. Now, that is clearly a lie. And Sir, I would not object that misstates the evidence. There is clear evidence to support that the messages are showing from a blocked sender. That is not accurate. Your Honor, some of those messages may have been blocked. <laughs> but there are other communications in the exhibit, in Clinton's own exhibits, 
that state, that show that he did respond to my client, whether it be in emails or text messages, and we've provided those uh, some of those exhibits. Um, it's Guys, it's Pepe Le Pew. That's what it is. And Clayton would block her. Then she would say something crazy or e email him or whatever, and then he would unblock her, respond, and then block her again. And she's going, hey, but he keeps responding. He keeps responding. It's Pepe Le Pew. In the ones that were admitted to this court. Now, Lauren testified that there was communication, even aside from the exhibits that we've presented. It's impossible to put all the communication within over four months into a, a, a short hearing, essentially. Now, I want to talk about the content of that communication. Please. All of the communication from my client to Clayton was meant for legitimate purposes and not to annoy him, not to harass him, not to alarm him. Almost all communication between Laura and Clayton was for the purposes of pregn the pregnancy and paternity. The only other sort of communication from my client toward Clayton was in relation to the post that he put online when my client would receive harassing messages from Clayton's fans and his followers. So the communication around that time, call it August, September, was toward Clayton asking him to take those different things down so that my client wouldn't be harassed. Throughout this entire time since May, Clayton has never been clear with what he's wanted to do. He's been wishy-washy the entire time. First, he didn't believe that my client was pregnant. So she sent him proof, and she sent him proof again. He wanted numerous forms of proof. You saw in our exhibit the video of Miss Owens pregnant. That was a video that Clayton asked my client to send to him. How can you ask someone to send you proof of their pregnancy and then now call it harassment? Now say that you're alarmed. Now say that you're annoyed. Now say that you're harassed. That doesn't make any sense. He was also wishy-washy about what should be done with the unborn children. And we're talking about at the beginning, around May, June. Should these children, should she have the children? Should they be aborted? Are we going to give them up for adoption? Am I going to have sole custody? Is she going to have sole custody? He was never consistent with what he wanted. I'm sure that he was, I'm sure maybe he thought one thing one day and maybe he thought something else another day and then he thought back to the, we didn't. And if I can object, which I know this isn't about me, but I would just say this. He believed she was pregnant because he felt gaslighted. He felt gaslighted that she was pregnant. He no longer believes that after seeing the pattern from other men, right? Just like we all watched and we go, oh, geez, she, he, she must be pregnant. Why would anyone say they're pregnant and, and they're not? And then, and then, you know, without, you know, sh sure, sure. I don't understand how she took a pregnancy test with him and was pregnant. I don't understand that. I don't understand how uh, that doesn't prove it was his. I don't know. I don't know how that would have happened am i am i accusing her of getting knocked up and then and then in the you know no no i don't know i'm as confused about that as everyone else but what we do know is that since that initial pregnancy test which she claims he was there for and since the initial like appointments she made with doctors and this what we do know is there's no i mean videos of ultrasounds other than the the fake one which she claims that Greg hacked. And if that's true, she should probably try to go after Greg, not me. So why are you going after me? Go after Greg if he's the one who hacked your account. Can't you prove that someone hacked your account? So either way, we look at all this and we go, I believe in science. I don't know about you guys. I believe in science. And I, I believe in examining evidence. I don't believe in believing people just because they say they have evidence. We've all examined the evidence and we don't see that proof that she is pregnant. So that's why Clayton has changed his tune on whether or not he wants to deal with her. I didn't know what he wanted. And that was communication that was going both ways, back and forth between Clayton and Laura. Again, he hasn't been consistent. And that is what the root of this problem is. That is why there's so many communications back and forth. Had this been done in person, had they chosen to meet up physically or talk over the phone, things wouldn't get lost in, in translation through email. Through and now Annie says if she took 
uh, a prescription HCG, it would give a false positive on the HCG test, which is true. Whether or not she got a prescription for that, uh, you know, I believe that would have to be an injection. You you can't get that over the counter. Now, if, um, you know, we were to subpoena her medical records, I'm just saying if we were, and we were to find out that she actually did take HCG, that would provide an insane level of of evidence for Clayton to sue her for defamation if she was actively pretending to be pregnant. You have to understand, I'm saying these as conditional statements. We don't know what happened here, but I think it's fair in this public court case to look at these as as possible motives, as possible things that would have went down. Text. But that's how they chose, that's how Clayton chose how he wanted communication with Laura. And that's what made everything so difficult. During this time period, Laura actually had to hire another attorney to help facilitate paternity testing. That didn't work, so then Laura had to file a, a matter in, out of the family court Section to create three, a parent complaint. These are not complaint. facts and evidence at this time. These are exhibits that Mr. Lopez did not get to present. I think she testified that she filed a paternity lawsuit. And they did not have Neither of them, my client nor Clayton, have had an attorney in that family matter, so they are forced to communicate with each other because they need to meet and confer. They needed to submit a resolution plan, so there's going to be text and communications back and forth from the two of them. Everything, again, everything that you've heard during, uh, whether it was our case in chief or the petitioner's case in chief, this is a snapshot of what has happened over the course of over four months. We were not able to present everything. All communication between my client and Clayton were for legitimate purposes. Again, not to harass them. Look at the exhibit. Look at the ones that Clayton submitted. There are clear exhibits that show that he was sending messages to her. We had submitted um, exhibits showing that uh, Clayton had been communicating with her. So the fact that in the petition itself st states that he had not responded to her, that, that's completely untrue. He had indicated in his petition that my client had harassed him. Well, that's not what happened. Who was the one that was posting videos online and getting harassed? Clayton was posting the videos. My client was getting harassed. Not one communication. There wasn't one communication that indicated after they had been in communication since May. Since then, there was no communications that were sent to my client telling my client, stop texting me, stop emailing me, stop calling me, not one. They presented one exhibit that shows one message he blocked that indicated her. that, oh, I'm, I may call the police, something like that. It seems like he might be worried. But since then, he had been communicating with my client. So, again, you can't say that you are being alarmed, annoyed, harassed, but then going ahead and then emailing my client. Well, we're going to have to find out. So to answer the question from Christie's Corner, who are those two back behind her lawyer in the corner? That is Greg Gillespie. That is the man that was in trial with Jane Doe for several years. In fact, right here, I haven't shared this with you guys, but on November 9th, one week after this trial, she was back in trial with Greg Gillespie. And I've got the 19 minute long phone call right here. I say phone call. It's um, audio only. Would you guys leave a comment? This would be a separate chat. Maybe this would be tomorrow morning. But would you guys like me to play this 19 minute long video? Excuse me, audio where you can hear that court case play out. Again, this is public. Let me know in the comment section if you want to hear. I think it is important because while this judge respectfully didn't want to allow past cases to be involved, there's nothing to say we in the court of public opinion cannot allow past cases to be involved here. So, if you are interested, and again, leave a comment in the chat, let me know, but if you're interested and want to come back tomorrow, it's tomorrow morning, same time, 7.30 Pacific Standard Time, I'll play this for you guys, and then we can just continue this conversation. You'll hear some pretty wild, wild things from this court case, which I believe was the judge dismissing it entirely, which means he didn't win, she didn't win, it was just like 
this is done. We're done here. Stop contacting each other. Okay. So it looks like everyone in the comment section wants to hear that. All right. We'll play that live stream tomorrow morning, 730 Pacific Standard Time. Texting my client. And again, for all of those reasons, I think that the communication between my, my client and Mr. Eckerd were for legitimate purposes for the uh, to determine pregnancy itself, moving into determining paternity itself, to trying to schedule paternity testing with the attorney, to the family court matter, and, and, and to today. And so for all those reasons, we're requesting that this be dismissed. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor, in rebuttal, none of the communication from Ms. Owens to Clayton has been for a legitimate purpose. As the court has heard today, it is clear there has been no DNA test or test of any kind to support that she is allegedly pregnant with Mr. Eckert's twin. There is no reason for these parties to communicate. What Mr. Lopez is proposing is that if you block someone, but they find another way to contact you, and then you tell them you still don't want to talk to them in a polite email or a polite message, then that's not harassment. That is the epitome of harassment, Your Honor. The court has received exhibits in the first hearing from Mr. Eckert supporting that she would find other avenues to communicate with him after he had blocked her. Again, it is Mr. Eckert's position that there is no, that this pregnancy has been fabricated. And I want to be clear on this, Your Honor. It's possible that Ms. Owens this is pregnant. This is alleged to be fraudulent. But it's my client's position that he did not have sexual intercourse with her and he, she is not pregnant with his alleged twin. And that is the root of the issue here. There has been no support for this alleged pregnancy, other than her attempts to show the court and or Mr. Ecker a picture of her alleged pregnancy, which again, we suspect may still be fabricated. So there has been no legitimate purpose to her communication other than to harass Mr. Eckert to try to force a relationship on him. She told Mr. Eckert on multiple occasions that she was going to force him to communicate with her, whether he wanted to or not. And he has been clear. He does not want any additional communication from her. All right, thank you. She looks aghast. So, um, as I stated when we first started this hearing. Drinking um, monster. I'm not making a determination as to whether or not she's pregnant or not. That is a family court matter. That case is pending before the family court. The testing or whatever is going to happen is a result of that. So I'm not making a decision and a determination today whether or not there is a uh, valid or invalid pregnancy. I understand Mr. Eckert's position is there isn't. I understand her position is there is. That that's where we are at the moment. With regards to the evidence and the communication, the court at this time does find there were a series of events that were aimed at the uh, plaintiff that would cause a reasonable person to be alarmed, annoyed, or harassed, that she, he was, in fact, alarmed, annoyed, or harassed. I do find they did not serve a legitimate purpose. Messages that have been sent, one, he blocked her on numerous occasions. She even said in the blocking communication, can you unblock me so I can unblock you again? I got a new number, and then there's another new number. I think that's clear that he does not wish to have communication. Nature of the communication, while maybe surrounds the pregnancy, the communications that I have a lot of concerns with are the ones where she's trying to make offers to him to continue a relationship, that she is trying to facilitate, if you do this, then I'll give you this. Uh, those kinds of messages are of the nature that are harassing and can be viewed as alarm, alarming, annoying, or harassing. Um, there are a number of messages that were admitted that are attempts at, I, I view kind of almost as trying to, you know, get him to do and agree to things 
that are not necessarily, you know, it's not like we said, hey, can you take a paternity test? And he said, no. Hey, you know, can you reconsider? I want to do a paternity test. And then I went and filed a lawsuit because you wouldn't do it. I mean, that's one thing. 500 emails back and forth or messages, I'll say text messages and emails over that period of time to try to clarify and do that it, it is, is beyond uh, what was necessary to be able to communicate those things. There were a number of threats to go to the media, which were other additional attempts to try to use the media as manipulation or the threat to go to the media as manipulation. I find those to be uh, alarming, annoying, or harassing. So I am going to grant the injunction at this time would, uh, is going to prevent any communication outside of legal, the legal process uh, and specifically a legal process and court hearing. Um, so I am going to grant the injunction. And so uh, I will find the uh, granted injunction today. Um, and then I know Ms. Owens isn't present, but we can give uh, a copy of the signed injunction, obviously, to Mr. Lopez uh, today. Uh, but whether or not Ultimately, she needs to be served with it uh, so that uh, the service of the injunction is appropriate because it will go into effect once the injunction is served upon her. It would remain in effect uh, for a period of one year. This was the hearing that she uh, had uh, as a result of that, so there's not an additional time to request an additional hearing. And if you guys want to wait for a few minutes, I'll sign a, an order. If there were exhibits that you did not offer that you wish to have returned to you, you can let the clerk know and she can release those back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks. This episode has been brought to you by Monster Energy. Pregnant? Need energy? Drink a monster. Actually, don't do that, but you can. So either way, I don't think there's anything else there. I'll let it play out for another minute or two. I think it's all clerical stuff here. All right, yeah, let's scrap it right there. We're at 90 minutes. And again, uh, for those wondering, yeah, there is a lot to go over here. I do want to thank those that have <clears throat> just donated to the GoFundMe. We will be going to court. This is a, a inevitable thing that is happening. We had, um, we're up to $9,960. My guess is it's going to cost anywhere between twelve to 14000 It could cost more. I'm not really sure. I'm going to be spending out of pocket as much as I can for this. Uh, but um, that is because I am being sued for, or I don't know, I don't even know if it's considered sued, but I'm being taken to court for an injunction against harassment, uh, in part because of the videos I've been sharing, one of which is this one, which I deleted and have since brought back to life after getting confirmation. Um, basically, without lying, how do I say this? Jane Doe had told me, this court case I'm referencing is sealed, and because of that, you're not allowed to share it, which we found out is not sealed. This is the court case from, I believe, Greg, who showed all of the information why he was proving fraud. None of this information was allowed in today's court hearing, um, but either way, I'll read just a snippet for you. Actually, let's go back one here. Um, and I've redacted all of this when I made this, I think I made this right before I traveled to the Maldives. So I made this at like 2 AM in the morning, but I have to tell you, I worked really hard making sure all of her information was out of it. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. I had met Redacted several times while she was dating Redacted, including a dinner with her family at the house of McRib, of Prime Rib. So, not McRib. So anyway, this this court case, and again, we'll we'll dive into this more tomorrow. We've already shared this whole video, but this these are sworn witness statements, which people do under oath, I believe, that say why they they feel like um, you know, and again, in this court case, which is separate, why they feel like the guy Greg was in the right here and and some of the evidence that is presented is that Gre that um, Jane Doe's father um, said his daughter. This is this is their statement. Jane Doe's father said his daughter had a tendency to exaggerate or even flat out make things up. Redacted was complaining of depression and suicidal thoughts at the fear of her relationship with Redacted ending and was very distraught. And again, this this is either Greg or Mike. I don't even remember at this point. They're, they're, these are the same case. These are multiple cases that she had against her. During that meeting, there was no discussion of 
him ever having been physical or psychologically abusive towards her. She did not complain at all about his conduct towards her. They admitted that she was in fact not pregnant and there was no need for an abortion. This could have been the first guy, Mike. I'm not really sure. She also apologized for threatening to commit suicide. The meeting ended with no final decision on the relationship, just the agreement that she would not rush a decision and for the two of them to continue. All right, so they're, they're wild things. Again, that's only five minutes into a 35-minute long video where they talk about um, the Google Images provided sonographic Im images. A reverse Google image search reveals that the sonographic images were identical to a sonogram found in a blog post from 2014. Again, if you think I'm repeating myself, I'm not. This is a different different court case against Jane Doe. They also claim that she changed the letterhead uh, from this law firm uh, and used the pre maybe used previous letterhead in order to send a statement about the pregnancy. And the law firm, apparently one of the people on the letterhead had no longer worked at that law firm. And, you know, thing, things that, I mean, can be very complicated stuff, folks. Um, so, that's it. That's all we got. Now, tomorrow, we've got this 20-minute long video of her court case with Greg, and we'll share this tomorrow along with any other, I don't know, evidence or things that people have said. We'll just provide as much color commentary towards it as we can. Uh, there's also another angle of this story that's emerging, which is the complete um, deleting of Chase J. Jones. Chase J. Jones has vanished from the internet. Um, this person has deleted their YouTube channel, their Medium page. They are gone, folks. Um, is that, I don't know, interesting? We'll have to find out. All right. Well, I got a lot to get to. I'm going to be going live on the Patreon in about an hour. Give me a chance to make another video before then. So I'll be live on the Patreon at 10.30 a.m. this morning. And then we will also have the afternoon podcast bachelor rush hour so if you've enjoyed the coverage here and you want to check out the afternoon podcast by all means uh, and i appreciate everyone hanging out here i appreciate everyone in the chat section uh, being by the request to not say anyone's names and all of that uh, again we're just trying to share as much of this publicly as possible i think that's the best way to protect what we're doing here to not hide and in in this and that but just to say this is what's out there and this is what we're dealing with um, let's see. Um, I am trying to get on other podcasts to talk about this. So if there's anyone who knows anyone at H3H3, if there's anyone who knows anyone at any of these other, lar I mean, literally any podcast whatsoever that wants to hear my story, I'm willing and happy to tell my story. We're trying to get as much publicity for this in order to protect ourselves in order to protect ourselves from future litigation. It is my belief now that we're so far in this quicksand that the only way to get out of it is to let anyone and everyone who's listening know what we're working against, okay? Um, yeah, where in the world is Chase G. Jones? We don't know, folks, uh, but we can hypothesize for sure. All right, I'll be back with more content. Hit the like button. If you haven't already, you can donate to the GoFundMe. One last check on it. I do appreciate everyone who has donated. I know most of you guys already have, so, uh, but anyway, that's just incredible that we were able to get that much um, crowdsourced funds. Uh, there are people that think we're, uh, you know, ripping people off and grifting for this and that. But those are obviously anonymous accounts who want nothing to do with the public image of what comes with a trial like this. If anyone, and I've said this before, if anyone criticizing my handling of this trial wants to publicly join me, by all means, I would uh, be okay with that. But for the people that are comfortably hiding behind the scenes and not targeted by her, I would um, argue they have no idea what it's like to deal with a trial like this. I don't plan on going into my trial unprepared. I plan on going into it with as much evidence as possible. In fact, I would argue, or I would say it's my opinion, that this will be the greatest mistake that she has made in all of these super litigious uh, efforts of hers because I am not somebody she has had past relations with. I am not somebody she has met before. And I am not somebody that I think would be worth fucking with because I am going to continue to share the truth. I'm not going to hide and we are going to pursue the truth at every angle we can find it. And 
what that means is if she's worried that I'm saying misinformation about her, let's get down to the truth. I think we all want that, right? I think we all want that. All right, folks. We'll have to see. My court date was moved from, I believe, this coming Monday to December 18th. It's my belief that it might get moved again, um, which would be interesting if that's the case. Uh, But those are public records. Um, You don't have to take my word for it. You can go look that up. And um, all right, folks, we'll be back uh, in a little bit with our next piece of content. Thanks so much.